Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video I'm going to teach you about Unholy Death Knight's talents and playstyle for BFA. Unholy is still a rod class that focuses on keeping up dots and bursting a target down with cooldowns. In this video I'm going to cover talent choices, when to use those talents, as a right trade and gearing, so you can keep pressure for your team with the right talent choices. Before we get into this video, it's important to note that this information has been gathered from the beta and talent choices or gearing might change with the release of BFA. Unholy Death Knights have one standard build which generates the most pressure for PvP. The standard build looks like this, but some talents can be swapped depending on what you face. This standard build provides the most pressure since it allows you to use your burst frequently and keep up as much AoE pressure as possible. Infected Claws is the best pick in this tier, which gives your pet attack a 30% chance to apply a festering wound to the target. This can be used to burst more often with Scourge Strike, Necrotic Strike or Apocalypse. Clawing Shadows can be used as an alternative and deals shadow damage and ignores armor. It can also be used from a 30 out range. Clawing Shadows works well combined with the Bursting Source talent and should be used versus teams where you won't be able to connect, for example versus mage teams. Clawing Shadows deals more damage but creates less pressure than Necrotic Strike. Since you can't use Necrotic Strike when you can't connect, Clawing Shadows is a good alternative. Even Fever is the best pick in this tier to roll the team down faster. An Holy Blight could be picked for the same reason, but its long cooldown makes it a worse pick over Even Fever. Bursting Source can be picked instead of Even Fever when you face a team where you will have trouble connecting and will have to play Clawing Shadows. So for example against mage teams. Bursting Swords is a better pick in PvE but offers less damage output than Ebon Fever in PvP if you do have uptime. The best pick for PvP in this tier is Asphyxiate. Asphyxiate can be used to start a CC chain, end a CC chain or can be used to execute a swap onto another target. Grip of the Dead could be used in a PvE environment to slow adds but it doesn't offer anything for PvP. The best pick in this tier is Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper offers stable burst damage and now generates 2 runes but no longer grants haste unless the target dies. Soul Reaper still remains the best pick for PvP. Harbinger of Doom is an alternative pick that could be very strong depending on how lucky you get with procs. This talent allows you to use multiple death coils to burst a target down but its RNG nature makes it a worse pick over Soul Reaper. The best pick in this tier is our new defensive cooldown Death Pact and should be used versus teams that will train you. Death Pact heals you for 50% of your maximum health but then places a healing absorption of 30% of your maximum health on you. Make sure that when you use Death Pact that you have some Death Strikes ready to use or that your healer can top you. Wrathwalk can be used instead if you won't be the kill target. Wrathwalk offers you some extra mobility against teams where you will struggle to connect to the kill target. For example versus mage teams. Spell Eater should be used versus Caster Cleaves where you won't need Wrathwalk to connect. Your anti-magic shell will absorb 30% more damage and last 5 seconds longer. The best pick in this tier is Epidemic. Epidemic should be used in most PvP situations because it can be used to rot down teams faster when playing a spread pressure setup. The file can be used versus melee cleaves or teams that stack up since the file makes your clawing shadows and scorch strike hit every target close to you as well. The file only offers slightly more damage output if you're able to keep all enemies inside the file which makes Epidemic a better pick. The best pick in this tier is Unholy Frenzy. Unholy Frenzy increases your haste by 20% for 12 seconds and causes your auto attacks to apply a festering wound to the target on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Allowing you to burst frequently which makes it the best pick in this tier. Summon Gargle can be used instead of Unholy Frenzy but has a long cooldown which makes it a worse pick for overall damage. Summon Gargoyle is a big cooldown that can finish games quickly and makes you very bursty. Summon Gargoyle should be used when you know it will be a quick game or versus teams where you will struggle to connect onto the kill target, for example versus mage teams. In BFA you can now pick 3 on the talents and choose between playing Trinket, Adaptation or Relentless. As a DK playing Trinket is always the safest option because you will have to rotate cooldowns and trinkets with your team. If your healer calls to use a defensive cooldown, 
You can use your trinket to save yourself, which would not be the case with Relentless or Adaptation. For PvP talents, there's one talent that should be picked in almost every situation, which is Necrotic Strike. Necrotic Strike consumes a stack of Festering Wounds and puts a Healing Absorb on the target. Necrotic Strike should always be played, unless you know you're gonna have next to no uptime on the target and you won't be able to use it. You then want to take one of the three auras, either Necrotic, Hardstop or Decomposing Aura. Necrotic Aura is the default option of the three, as it will usually provide you and your team with the largest DPS increase. Hardstop Aura can be used when playing versus a setup where you will have struggled to connect onto your kill target, for example versus mages or hunters, since it increases the cooldown of blink or disengage by 20%. Decomposing Aura can be used versus melee cleaves or stacking teams where you will have a lot of uptime to decrease their maximum health by 15% when it's stacked up. After selecting your aura, you then get to choose either a talent that increases your DPS or one of the utility talents. Unholy Mutation provides you with a significant DPS increase and also adds some dispel protection to your disease as it will deal a large amount of damage whenever it's dispelled. Anti-Magic Zone should be used instead of Unholy Mutation when you or your team need an extra defensive cooldown versus spellcasters. Dark Simulacrum can also be used instead of Unholy Mutation when facing a melee caster team. For example, Mage Warrior. Dark Simulacrum can be used to steal defensive cooldowns like Pain Suppression, Ice Block or Divine Shield. Or it can be used offensively to steal CC like Cyclone or Polymorph. The standard build is Necrotic Strike, Necrotic Aura and Unholy Mutation. Unholy Death Knights have a couple of strong Azerite traits that will help you with your damage output. The best Azerite trait for Unholy Death Knights is Cancerous Wounds, which increases the damage of your Festering Strike and gives it a 10% chance to apply free Festering Wounds to the target. This trait will make it easier to burst a target down quickly by building Festering Wounds up a lot faster than before. The next trait is Festering Doom, which causes your death coil to increase the damage of your next Festering Strike. This trait works perfect together with the Cancerous Wounds trait, which is why it's one of the better traits. The final trait is Festermite, which increases your strength for every stack whenever you burst a Festering Wound. This effect lasts for 20 seconds and can be stacked up. However, only the strength stacks up and not the duration of the buff. Many classes benefit from stacking Azerite traits to increase their damage or healing. For Unholy Death Knights, that's not the case. All the traits shown before work well together and therefore you should aim to have one Cancerous Wound trait, one Festering Doom trait and one Festamite trait, if possible, to increase your damage output. Every gear piece will have Strength, which is the main stat for most melee DPS. After this, the priority list looks like this. Haste, Mastery, Versatility and Critical Strike. Haste helps you regenerate runes faster and makes your dots stick faster, which increases your damage output significantly. It will also help you during burst, since you're able to use more necrotic strikes or scourge strikes on a target while bursting compared to playing with no haste. Mastery is a close second, since it increases your shadow damage done, which is most of your abilities, which is why it's your second priority. Critical Strike and Versatility aren't very useful for Unholy Death Knights, since Critical Strike won't help you to increase your damage. Unholy Death Knights aim to rot the team down or to quickly swap onto a target to burst them down. Critical Strike offers nothing for this situation and should be avoided. When looking at gear, you should aim to have haste and mastery on every gear piece. Preferably more haste than mastery if possible. For your enchants, you want to have enchant ring backed of haste, which increases your haste by 37 on your rings. DKs don't use normal enchants on their weapons and we use a class specific rune on their weapon instead which will be Rune of the Fallen Crusader. For trinket choices, there are two trinkets that really stand out from the rest. Resonance Gleaming Eye gives baseline strength and has a chance to increase your haste for 15 seconds, which makes it a perfect trinket for Unholy Death Knights. Second is Crowlock's Claw, which gives baseline versatility, which increases your baseline damage by about 2% and has a chance to grant you a large amount of strength for 10 seconds. For Alliance, Human is the best pick since it gives you an extra trinket from the racial ability, every man for himself. Even though this can only be used on stuns, it can save games by using it to get out of stuns to use a defensive cooldown, for yourself or your partners. For Horde, Orc is the best pick because of multiple reasons. First is Hardiness, which reduces the duration of stuns on any Orc by 20%, making it appealing to most PvP players. 
Second is Blood Fury, which can be used together with your burst abilities to increase your attack power for 15 seconds. And last is Command, which increases the damage of all pets done from any orc by 1%, making orc the best race for death knight by far. Human could be useful if you know you're gonna get trained and need the extra trinket to use a cooldown, but the passive orc ratios combined offer a lot more for unholy death knights. Unholy Death Knight's playstyle remains the same and you will spend the majority of the game keeping up your dots and setting up burst on targets. The single target rotation consists of building up festering wounds on the kill target with festering strike before consuming them to burst the target down. Remember to keep Virulian Plague up during this. Start by using Outbreak to apply Virulian Plague to the target. Start building festering wounds with festering strike. Then burst the festering wounds by using a necrotic strike. And finally, dump your runic power by using Death Coil. To rot down multiple targets at the same time, keep up Virulian Plague on as many targets as possible. After that, resume your single target rotation to build runic power and Festering Moons with Festering Strike. Once you've generated enough runic power, Dump this runic power on Epidemic to damage all targets affected by Virulian Plague. Remember to use Death and Decay if multiple enemies stack up to rot them down even faster. To quickly burst a target down, have 6 stacks of Festering Wounds ready to start bursting. In BFA, the max stacks of Festering Wounds is reduced from 8 to 6. Use Dark Transformation and Unholy Frenzy or Summon Gargoyle when you start bursting. Use your trinkets and racials combined with the burst abilities and use necrotic strike until the target has 4 festering wounds left. After this, you will use your biggest damage ability, Apocalypse, to burst all 4 wounds and make the target drop a lot of health with healing absorbs active. As a DK, your ideal opener would be to find a class in stealth with your death and decay. For example when facing a rogue. This will stop their opener and instantly put your team ahead. Besides trying to find a target in stealth, make sure you have your kill target dotted up with Virulian Plague before connecting to them. Send in your pet before you connect as well, so you can start building up festering wounds. And remember to keep Chains of Ice active on the target to help yourself or your partners connect faster. The playstyle for Unholy Death Knights remains the same. Pick your talents based on what setup you face. Look for gear with haste and mastery on it, get a chance to have haste, and try to get one of each Azerite trait. One Cancerous Wound trait, one Festering Doom trait, and one Festamite trait. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please let me know what you think in the comments, and leave a plus kill if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.